If you're building an app on Bubble, the security of your app, like who can access certain data, who can access certain pages, is ultimately up to you. In other words, if you're not personally customizing security measures in your application, it's not going to happen on its own. In this video, we're going to go through an exhaustive security checklist that you can use to help make sure only the right people can access your app and its data. First off, let's break down which areas of security Bubble is responsible for and which areas are fully up to you. Bubble is responsible for providing and maintaining a platform for you to build and deploy your app. In order to keep your data and app safe, Bubble manages account security, data encryption, user authentication, and application level safeguards to keep apps online and protected from cyber attacks. Bubble is compliant with the SOC 2 Type 2 standard for security. This is a set of standards and guidelines for service organizations to maintain overall security, confidentiality, and integrity of customer data. Bubble is also GDPR compliant, which is a privacy regulation in the EU and the UK around how personal data is processed. All of this is to say that Bubble is committed to maintaining a safe environment for all apps built on the platform. Now, Bubble apps are built on Amazon Web Services, or AWS for short. AWS is essentially Bubble's underlying tech engine. It's responsible for providing the hardware, network, computing, data storage, and of course, security around those processes. Many popular apps and services you likely use today are also powered by AWS, like Netflix, Airbnb, and LinkedIn. So Bubble's relationship with AWS is to ensure that the integrity of the server environment is well maintained. Now, you as a Bubble user building a custom application with custom designs, data structures, and logic, it's your responsibility to use Bubble's settings and tools correctly. Keep in mind that Bubble doesn't know what exactly you're building, so it can't automatically enforce your custom access rules for you. You need to give Bubble those instructions within your build. If you're not implementing your own custom security measures, you could risk serious consequences like data leaks and unauthorized access to your app's workflows. Okay, so now let's talk through all of the security settings that you'll need to work with no matter what type of application you're building. And we're gonna organize this by how widespread that security settings impact is on your app. The first set of settings starts at the Bubble account level. This is before you open up any app editor. Having access to a Bubble account means that you'll have access to all of the apps that account owns. And if that account has been invited as a collaborator to other apps, you'll also be able to access those. As the owner of an application, you can open up the editor, see all of the data within the editor, you can invite other collaborators to it, you can even transfer ownership to other Bubble users. So you very much want to protect who has access to your Bubble account. You can do this by creating a strong password for the account and also implementing two-factor authentication. Next is a handful of settings around application access. This is going to govern who can access the editor and in some cases, who can run the preview of the pages that you're designing. The first are your application rights. We recommend keeping this setting on private because that will restrict access to your editor to only the app owner and any invited collaborators. Speaking of collaborators, you can invite other Bubble users with their own accounts to access your editor and specify the level of access that they're going to get. Make sure to only maintain this relationship while you are working with them. If you are no longer working together, be sure to remove them from this access. Next, you can also add a password protection to your pages, meaning when a user tries to load a page, they would first see a lock where they have to provide a username and password before they can load anything. This can optionally be placed on the live environment, but we do recommend that you keep this at least enabled for your development environment. The next setting is to create a password policy. This is great practice no matter what type of application you are building uh, when you're working with user accounts. Anytime a user signs up to your app and creates a new user record in your database, they are required to create a password, but you can optionally require a minimum for what this password needs to contain, a certain number of characters, a capital letter, a number, a special character. This way, all of your users sign up with a strong password. We also recommend staying on the latest Bubble Engine version. You'll be reminded whenever a new version is made available. You can think of this as like a software update. Sometimes these software updates may introduce improvements or even bug fixes to the underlying platform. 
it may have security impacts. So as much as possible, just make sure you're on the latest version. The next settings relate to protecting your data. This is one of the most important areas because it is up to you to custom define your data structure. You're creating your tables, your fields, the relationships between those records. So you need to ensure that only the right people have access to specific data. And not just that, but the level of access. Can they view the data versus can they edit the data? Your first stop in protecting your app's data is privacy rules. This is where you can create global restrictions that apply to the entire application data type by data type. It's up to you to define the rule. This typically means defining who a user is and perhaps what their relationship is to the record within that data type. From there, you can determine what kind of access they have to those records. This is a really important baseline level of security you want to apply to your database, especially to the data types that have the most sensitive information. The key here is that privacy rules are applied at the server level, which means that if a user doesn't meet any one of these rules, the data that they don't have access to will not be sent to the browser. So it's much more secure than solely relying on conditions and constraints that you have within your page level designs. Now, privacy rules only apply to the data stored within your database records. You wanna be very careful to not store sensitive information in your option sets, your application texts, or within URL parameters. And be mindful of what you're asking your users to save to your database, because remember, as the app owner, you have full access to your database behind the scenes and potentially any collaborators who have also been given that access right. Uh, this is why Bubble encrypts and hides user account passwords from you. So you don't want to do things like copy that password to a plain text field or store full credit card numbers to text fields either. Just remember that even if you don't plan on displaying those values in a design, they can still technically be accessible. You can also find a setting where you can grant or deny Bubble employees access to your database as well. Oftentimes, if you need to uh, get Bubble support to help troubleshoot something that you're doing in your app, they may need to go into your editor to take a look at your environment. And so this setting makes it so that they do not have access to the actual data records. Now, this doesn't stop them from running the application as a user would and being exposed to any data you may uh, present as part of your logic and designs. Uh, but this is also a good setting to be aware of. Now let's talk about page level security approaches. Honestly, this is really where it can be very easy to find holes in security settings and security approaches because up until this point, all of the settings we've been talking about are built into your editor. So it's really just up to you kind of what selections you want and sort of the level of uh, those settings you want to implement. But with the pages, you have a blank canvas. It is up to you to do all of your designs, to create all of the workflows, to put conditions on things. So the best approach you can take to ensure that things are really locked down is to test your application, run your application as every possible type of user. So a logged out user, a logged in user, a logged in user with a specific role. If you have multiple roles, make sure that you go through each one of those. Um, it may depend on the relationship the user has with the page or with a referenced piece of data. Okay, you want to make sure that you find those security holes before your users do. Start by addressing your login versus logout flows. Make sure that users even have a way to log in with their credentials and also log out of the application. Once you're on a page, you wanna create page redirects to restrict access to unauthorized users. Also at the page level, you can create redirects based on custom user roles that you define within your data structure. And once the user is allowed on the page, now you can think about data level permissions. Obviously you have your privacy rules, but you also have a lot of granular controls within your designs to give users access to viewing data versus editing. Be mindful of your workflows and conditions. Make sure that you check who can trigger you know, pieces of functionality because that may come down to your custom user roles as well. Now, if your application is gonna be integrating with outside services via API, custom code, or plugins that you're installing to your app, you absolutely wanna be mindful of the security settings around these connections. 
One of the most common tools for APIs is the API Connector plugin. This is a universal tool that will let you create uh, custom calls to APIs with third-party services, and you want to pay close attention to the authorization settings. Bubble does have a handful of common presets that you can take advantage of, but if you do choose to self-handle your authentication, make sure to test this well so that everything is protected. On top of that, every Bubble application has the option to expose a built-in data and workflow API. As far as the data API goes, this means that third-party services could fetch information from your database simply through API calls. They don't necessarily need to interact with your designed pages. This is something that you need to intentionally expose uh, data type by data type. So by default, these are turned off for you. Same thing goes for the workflow API. This is related to your backend workflows. So uh, for any workflows that are going to be exposed as a public API, you want to make sure that uh, you're aware of who has access to those URLs. If you want, you can also create an API token so that there's another level of authentication that needs to be met before the workflow can run. Overall, be mindful of the plugins that you're installing in your application. They may ask you for some sensitive information in order to work. Some of them may even install a custom code behind the scenes in order for it to function properly. Now, this isn't to say that those are bad things necessarily. You just want to make sure that they're reliable, that they are secure, um, and that you don't have data leaking because of it. Same thing goes for any potential custom code you may add to your application. For example, if you're using HTML elements uh, to render embedded items in your page designs. Just be careful about what you are uh, inserting into that code. And just like it's a good idea to keep your application on the latest Bubble Engine version, you want to do the same with all of your plugins. Whenever you see an update is available, check out what the update includes because it may bring improvements around security. Hey, real quick, if you're finding this helpful, we've put together a complete guide that will help you figure out whether Bubble is right for your app. You can check it out over at coachingnocodeapps.com slash bubble hyphen guide. I've also put the link in the description below. As you can see, this guide walks through everything from pricing to performance, IP ownership, and more. Head to coachingnocodeapps.com slash bubble hyphen guide to get immediate access. Now let's talk through some extra security items that you may need depending on the type of app you're building and or who you are building it for. If you're building a SaaS application, pay close attention to your data structures. You'll likely need to manage custom roles and permissions for your users, as well as account records for each of your SaaS customers so that they can stay separated from each other and it can allow you to create more consistent privacy rules. If you're working with sub apps, a lot of that data separation is going to happen for you, but you still want to be quite mindful of any custom structures required for your application to work properly. Enterprise applications come with additional security capabilities such as single sign-on into the bubble accounts. You want to take advantage of those as much as possible because with larger applications, there are often going to be more people involved. So you want to make sure that everything is tightly secure. You can of course implement single sign-on with third-party services such as logging in and signing up to the app with a Google account or with a Facebook account. There are many services that offer this capability. You don't need to be on an enterprise plan for this, but this does involve an API connection. So that just goes back to plugins or custom connections that you're making with the API connector. If your application has users uploading files, you also have the ability to make those files private. This does involve working with privacy rules as well. If you're tracking your user activity in your app with software such as Google Analytics or Mixpanel, be mindful of the type of consent you need to grab from your users for that. Um, if you are in the EU or the UK, you need to make sure that you're following GDPR regulations. Bubble also lets you configure how your app collects cookies. You can have your users opt in and opt out of these to stay compliant. Keep in mind that Bubble is not HIPAA compliant and does not recommend you build applications that involve storing sensitive patient information. If your application is processing transactions, if you're collecting payments in any way, we highly recommend you use a payment gateway to handle all of that processing for you. You don't want to store full credit card numbers or really even sensitive financial account information in your database. Allow your integration with the payment software to handle all of that for you securely. 
you can absolutely build out features that involve payments, such as one-time payments, recurring payments, even users paying each other in a marketplace environment. You just don't want to be the one transmitting that sensitive uh, financial information across the web. Depending on the nature of your application, you may also need to review any regulations around data protection for children, for students, and around communication via mass email and mass SMS or text messaging. As you can see, security is an important layer that can affect many parts of your application's build. Start from the account level first, then work your way into the app, then into the pages, to all the way down into workflows and conditional expressions. I know this may feel a little bit tedious at first, but it is an important aspect of maintaining a trustworthy and compliant product for your users. While Bubble as a platform is handling the infrastructure behind the scenes, ultimately your users' data and your custom processes are your responsibility to protect. Be mindful of what regulations you need to be compliant with based on your own market and industry. All right, I hope this was helpful. And if it was, the content you're about to see on the screen next will help you take things even further.